uh, welcome back to this uh, another module on classification of uh, diabetes we will move on to this session after having listened about uh, type 1 diabetes type 2 diabetes modi and lada you can listen to this session uh, so whatever we have learned uh, we will just uh, put a simplified classification uh, how to uh, group the available diabetes so these four diabetes are the one which we commonly see so uh, once we have known these type of uh, diabetes how to classify them or how to uh, how to label the patients whether they belong to type 1 type 2 modi or lada without any confusion so that is what we are going to see in this uh, session on classification of diabetes we will call this as alpha beta classification for the simplicity of it i'll just tell you what is alpha beta or a beta classification uh, later so we are uh, we will be adding more confusion to what you have learned but we will arrive at a consensus or a clearing figure at the end of this session of this brief session of 30 minutes so how does ada diabetes diabetes ada says there are only four different types of diabetes they are very clear type 1 diabetes type 2 diabetes other diabetes gdm so very very simple so the patient should belong to one of these uh, classifications that is what ada says these other diabetes may include the other uh, uncommon types of diabetes also so it may include a pancreatic diabetes or because of the uh, cystic fibrosis or it could be because of um, Modi or it could be because of the neonatal diabetes or it could be because of the drug induced diabetes all these things come into other diabetes so uh, this is what ADA gives an idea about so uh, what is uh, type 1 diabetes the type 1 the disease process in classical type 1 patient is autoimmune in nature whereas the disease process in classical type 2 diabetes is not autoimmune so what, what do we mean by autoimmune we have dealt it well in type 1 diabetes so the autoimmune beta cell destruction leads to insulin deficiency whereby the beta cells are not able to produce any insulin at all so the circulating antibodies are taken as a markers of this diabetes so if a patient has got a type 1 diabetes if the individual has got a type 1 diabetes the presence of circulating auto antibodies is a marker to tell whether they have a type 1 diabetes or not what will happen in type 2 diabetes there are no reliable markers for type 2 diabetes and therefore the absence of markers or manifestation of type 1 diabetes is frequently taken as an indicating future of type 2 diabetes if the auto antibodies are negative or if the patient is not fitting into type 1 then we call them as type 2 so type 1 is auto antibody positive type 2 is auto antibody negative but in clinical practice how do we look at our patients so we don't look at when a patient comes to us we don't look at whether the patient has got antibody or not like ada says rather we look into phenotypical classification so this is where the first confusion comes so we'll be adding more confusions just hold on to this session we will derive at a consensus how we should go about it so how do we do at phenotypically classifying we look at a patient when they come what is the age of the onset because if their patient is young less than 20 25 we invariably tend to look at whether the patient is type 1 we don't look at only age but we look into the other futures also so the age of onset whether there is an apparent abruptness of onset of hyperglycemia is there or not ketosis type 1 so what is the degree of obesity so if the patient has got obesity we think in terms of type 2 is there any other autoimmune diseases present or is there an apparent need for insulin replacement if so how much amount of insulin the patient requires so all these phenotypical things we look at to say whether the patient belongs to type 1 or type 2 so this is where the first uh, confusion happens ada says look at the antibody but we look at the phenotyping of the patients so this is the first imperfection that we develop 